Hello, my name is Terrell Pauly, and welcome to lesson number three from the HL7 tutorial for beginners course or course. So let's let's continue on. If you have not, uh, you know, listen, go back and listen to watch videos number one, number two. Uh, let's pick back up where we left off. So we left off at the actual going over the actual message structure for. Uh, uh, ADT A04, which is registering a new patient. So next, let's talk about segments. So, which we I think we kind of brief, briefly touched on. So a segment is a collection. So we talked about the message type. We talked about the message structure within a uh, within a message, and then we talked about um, segments, right? And how the segments make up a make up a message, and so now let's talk about the actual segment. So a segment is a collection of fields where each field is separated by the pipe del delimiter, and each segment is identified by a unique three character code called the segment ID. So we have these segment IDs: MSH, EVN, PID, uh, PV1, and so if we look at the um, these different so if we start off with the MSH which is the message header segment we'll see that uh, these different fields here so all of these are different fields here and we can actually look up what these actual fields mean um, but um, so if we take a look and actually let's take a look real quick at the message header segment so if we come back to HL7 spec so we take a look so we come here to message control segments and we'll find the message header we click on that message header so we have here uh, sequence number one well I, I'm gonna go over that actually in the next slide but we, we have here the uh, these these are the, actually the different fields here so the field separator that's what that is uh, field separator encoding character so if we come back to here so these different fields so actually the message header is a little is different than everything else. This one is a message, the field separator field, and then these are the actual um, encoding. What do they call it? Encoding characters. Encoding characters. And then you have the the other uh, you know sender app sent by receiving app. So these are the different fields here. So let's come down to the PID segment. Um, and so you can actually see how you can kind of make up. So if the PID is a patient identifier, you can kind of see here the patient's name, uh, Tony Stark, uh, Stark Tony. This is the actual, I think this is the actual patient's birth date. Perhaps we can confirm that. You know, you can kind of see the address here. So, but you kind of see that how these different um, fields, the segment is made up of different fields. Now, this is what I wanted to get to next. So, as the segment app attribute table defines all the fields for a segment. So, if we take a look at the PID segment, which is patient identifier, it tells us defines what the uh, sequence number is of the field which means the position of the field and uh, it also lets us know the length so we have sequence number we have the length we have the data type the type of the field uh, optionality if it can be optional um, the it, repeatable if it can repeat TBL is for if it, if it references if the value comes from a table, the table number, the item number is the unique item number for that 
field and the actual name, the element name. So if we take a look in our example here, our pit segment example. So we see that sequence number one. So position number one is the set ID, the PID. So that's the PID, the element, uh, the PID. Number two is the, uh, let me see here. So number two is the patient ID. No, wait a minute, I have that wrong. Set ID. Let's make sure here. Let's make sure this is correct. So let's go to So that's defined in chapter two. Message control. Or is it chapter three? Chapter three, patient identifier segment. So So let's take a look here. So we have our attribute table here. Once it goes through that, so we have the let's fill things. Oh, okay, excuse me. So this field contains a number of that identifies this transaction for the first occurrence of the segment. The sequence number shall be one. For the second occurrence, the sequence number shall be two, etc. So, excuse me. So, position number one, sequence number one is actually number one. The, the so if we have. Um, If we have more than one PID in a message, then that will be the next PID in the message will be number two. Yeah. Okay. And then so and number two is the patient ID, which is uh which is blank. Which is uh blank. And number three is the patient identifier list, which is what's what's used. We have the actual patient ID. Um number four. So six number one, two patient identifier list three. Yep, number four is also Position number four is blank and number five. So we, we have number five is the patient name. So you can actually count uh, the the um, the fields. They said that you can actually just count by the the um, the delimiter being used, the pipe delimiter. So it will start. It will start as so the first the first delimiter is one, two, three, four, five. And that's how you kind of count for to, to to figure out which which field position that you're in. I believe that they're all all segments are like that, except for the, I think the message header is the only one that's kind of unique. It's different. It actually the the message header. I don't want to confuse anybody, but the message header actually you know how you have like the event segment. You have uh, also be the same way one two three four five. So if we get to number five, so one, two, three, four, five, number five should be the operator ID for the event segment. Let's just verify that real quick. So if we come back to our document. Message control segments. Did I miss it? Message control, okay. Okay, it's not there. So where do we find the event type? There we go. So event type. 
So position number five is the operator ID. Okay. So, and that's how you can kind of count the, the find the actual position. You count from the first, the first, uh, the limit, the, the first pipe, one, two, three, four, five, and the operator ID. Same thing for what we were looking on here. If we wanted to find position number five for the patient name, we start out the first, the first, uh, the first pipe, one, two, three four five patient's name and they're all like that the same except for the message header the message header is the only unique one because i believe in the message header the um the first pipe is actually the the it's, that's actually a sequence number so it actually is one and then two three and and going forward but you can actually take a look at that yourself in the HL7 spec for the message header the details on that so you kind of see here so this is the the message attribute table you know again in summary it defines all the fields for segment so I think that we should stop here so that uh we kind of went over the, um, I think we went over, what do we go over the segments and we went over the segment attribute table. Okay. So stay tuned for the next video coming up and I'll see you next time. My name is Sherelle Pauley.